Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. Today on the show, I meet a couple that work together as musicians. And they've actually uh, followed the show for quite a while, and I've interacted with them online for a couple of years now. And I kept meaning to have them on the show and kept forgetting. And then, and then I'd record the shows and I'd be like, oh yeah, that's right. So I was glad when I did the call out for artists this time because they responded right away and we were finally able to talk to each other face to face. Well, video to video, I guess. I guess, you know, I don't know. I don't know how I would refer to that. Regardless, we finally spoke and we've been interacting online forever. And this duo has been making music for many years. They also decided to start their own blog where they talk about their, they're not giving necessarily advice on how to be musicians, but just going, this is what we do. This is how we've done things. Here's our experience with when we've tried this. Things like that. And they make uh, videos. They have a very active YouTube channel. They started their own Facebook group where they, and that's one of the things, one of the reasons that I met them is they invited me to join their Facebook group about being a DIY musician. And I joined it and I've known them ever since. So I was really happy when I got to talk to them today and it's a very interesting conversation. They have a website that is bloomingprojippy.com and they explain where that name came from. It's the background and the many different things that they've done, the different styles of music they've recorded and different things they've tried out. They've gone with fads and then they finally just said, you know what, we're gonna release things online and make the music we want and they have a new album that just came out. And don't forget to go to TomRay'sWebsite.com and subscribe to the show if this is the first time that you're listening to it. And you can also check out my daily webcomic and you can check out uh, my different vlog videos where I just kind of go about what I do, things that I've made, stuff like that. So go to TomRay'sWebsite.com. Now, here is today's art podcast starting right now. Anderson. I'm back. We are the Pajipi Music Group. Yes. We are Bourgeoisie Paper Jam, which is basically a, a, a musical group. We do funk, we do rock, we do just about everything under the sun. Uh, we also do, we have what, a blog, a blog podcast, we have, podcasts, YouTube, we have channel. YouTube channel, yes. some everything. If it's musical, if it's artistic, we do it. Yes. That's you, the way we were. You guys really do a lot. And and uh, we've That's been following each so we've been, been hanging out with you. You do a lot. <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. I guess I guess so. All right. You're okay. <laughs> Valid. Um and first of all, where where are you two located? We're in Detroit, Michigan. Mm-hmm. Well, basically right outside of Detroit, yeah. but let's just say Detroit. Because they won't know if we're yeah, we <laughs> right. right. They won't know. No, I am so offended that you're not specifically in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> we were for 13 years. Yeah, it got we too rough. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little bit too tough. Yes. As far as- How long have you been playing music, first of all, both of you? A uh, long time, man. I, you know, I, years and years and years, Dinosaur I would say. Years. Yeah, right. You know, so. Um, it's been over 30 years of us making music because we met wow. over 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. 1986 so. is when we met. Yeah. Making music together. So, yeah. yeah. Man. So now. First of all, what's the what is uh, the the band name you or the group name that you have again? What is that? Bourgeoisie Paper Jam. Yeah. Okay, how'd you come up with that? It, um, well, we wanted to take the establishment and turn it on its head, and so at the time that seemed like a really great idea until it came to spelling it. So <laughs> <laughs> I had to I had to sound it out, spell it out, check it three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I had to do that too. I had to kind of break it down into its syllables in yes. order to actually be able to spell it. But yeah, it was more or less that type of thing because you know we had kind of gone through a a time within the record industry. Like for us, we kind of came of age, I guess you would say, kind of that post-punk, yeah. uh, early new wave, uh, kind of, uh, um, I guess, dog days of funk type of mm-hmm. era, that, like early 80s type time period. So, you know, by the time we started really doing music kind of professionally, I think 
hip hop had kind of started to take on. You started yeah. getting into a little bit more electronic kind of techno yeah. type of stuff. I think for us, you know, early on, we tried doing different things uh, that really was not us. <laughs> we yeah, had a house you know. music um, oh, really? uh, song that charted in Italy on the yeah, Italian yeah. Music Network. Yeah. So we had different projects. So Bourgeoisie Paper Jam is one of the names of the projects. Uh -huh. It's yeah. just that kind of is closest to the kernel of what we do. Yeah, that, that's, that's really essential of what we do. Because yeah. I, I think what really knocked us on our head is when we did like a hip hop project. Oh, Lord. And it just really just was not us. No, you know, and that was, was us awful. trying to fit into what we needed to do in order to quote unquote make it in the music industry. Right. And, you know, when you kind of get to that point in time when you have to listen to it and you say, wait a minute. I can't. I cannot I do this. No. This is just really not us yeah so then what we just kind of said was forget it we're just going to do whatever the hell we want to yep. do and that's what bourgeoisie paper jam was right you know, like the first record we did it on a track real or real <laughs> task cam uh -huh. psr yes. right you know i had a atari st computer yes. with oh. <laughs> Dr. running that software yeah. right and, you know, that's what we use, man. And that album is raw. I mean, yeah. it is raw. I mean, there's some notes on there. I'm like saying, man, I need to recut that. Mm -hmm. But at the time, I think I was so tired of making music that, you know, was we supposed thought, to be perfect, yeah, supposed, supposed to be to just to right, people. and all the rest of that kind mm -hmm. of stuff that I think at that time when I was making that record, it didn't make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. We just wanted to make something that felt good to us. Yes. I think we released it on cassette. Yes. You know, uh, we made the, you know, the cassette covers, all the rest of that yep, kind of stuff. Home. So, yep. You know, got like uh, cassette duplicators to do it, yep. and that really kind of began the whole DIY, yep. you know, rock star yep. kind of ethos. Yep. Yeah. For us. No, create. Those were the two things. Like, being able to self-produce cassettes at home was like a godsend. Like yes. even. Even if you were starting out like just in high school or something, you could just dub a tape and all you had to make was like 10 of them. You know, yeah. it's, it's, how, right. many, how many friends did you actually have? And right. <laughs> well, we didn't, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know about you, but I didn't have any friends. So, yeah, so that was part of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, how did you, how did you both actually meet up to create the band? Were you doing different projects or did you both just already were you mu musicians and said like hey we should start a band like how did how did it actually all come to be like what was the first thing that 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 created this 30 years of working together right i know <laughs> it's like i was working on demos at the time i was you know um doing some demo works and i had a couple of songs where i wanted to have a female vocalist on it and so i you know i told a couple of my friends about it and i had a couple of different you know um a uh, female artist come over and mm -hmm. sing, and she was actually one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that's kind of how a we friend first of met. ours yeah. introduced us. Yeah, brought I, I had no friends, but I had one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he introduced us, yeah. and we worked together, and then we started talking on the phone. You know, the old-fashioned corded phone. Yeah, and I, and and I just really loved what he was doing, and then he was liking my songs, and I'm like, really? Yeah, you know, like, whatever. <laughs> right. I just graduated from high school and I'm like, oh, you know, it took a minute, but yeah, we were, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing was, I, I think I really liked about her music was that she didn't sound like anybody. Hmm. It's like, you know, when I listened to it, it was like, she just seemed like she was just making music out of her own head. And, you know, and, and I had really kind of strived to do that, to, to make more music that was out of my own head and not necessarily try to sound like anybody. Which, in a way, that's that's kind of undermines it if you're thinking about getting a record deal, right. you know. So if anybody's thinking about getting a record deal, ignore that right. because a lot of times, you know, they're looking to put you in categories, right. you know. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think for me, you know, I always wanted to find something that you know didn't fit neatly in a particular category. And right. So, so when I that met was inspirational him, for me. he had the name for Jippy and that's yeah. what it meant is the preppies, the jitterbugs and the hippies. So it's like, a, I was going to ask that question sound. where that came from. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> different sounds right. all together, different ethos. Like he was wearing, I forgot, he was wearing the boat shoes, which was the preppy. When I met him, he uh -huh. had like a zillion pairs of these in different colors, boat shoes, but then he had blue jeans. And then he was wearing like kind of it's like a Prince kind of do with the over the eye and all that. Oh, so really? he had like a conglomeration of styles 
And I'm like, okay, got a little goose, goose swag, you know, a little something going there. And had his own sound, he had his own music, and I'm like, okay, so, yeah. yeah. It's it's funny the, going back. You were saying like you don't need a record label and things like that, and it's like. Most people, I don't think they even really consider that as much anymore. Whereas we went through the time where it evolved and became like, maybe I don't need one anymore. Like, like yeah. there are people on the internet today going, well, I just create a band camp page. What, 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 what what's right. a record label right. going to do? Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course they still have the money, but. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, I almost wish I could forget that that was the standard of success because in the back of our heads still. You yeah. know, that's still kind of ringing up there. It's like, oh, you're successful when, you know, mm -hmm. whereas the older we get, like you said, we want to do music we want to do. We don't want somebody to come along. Same thing with the podcast or the blog or anything. I don't want somebody to come along and tell me how I can do right. or what I can wear in my hair or, you know, I don't want somebody coming along to tell me, hey, give, you know, give me $50 and then tell me I got to do it their way. Right. I, that just doesn't. That doesn't go with who we are. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and I have to be honest with you. I mean, you know, rejection is what I guess builds the attitude. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. It's sort of like it's being rejected by the record industry and kind of deciding how you're going to deal with that rejection. You know, what does that rejection mean to you? Oh, yeah. Does it mean that you're going to quit? You're going to stop doing it? Or if you're going to keep doing it? And if you're going to keep doing it, then you got to do it yourself. Yeah. You know, that's that's kind of where you end up at. You know, at least I knew for me, I knew making music that was, I guess, supposed to be commercial, that wasn't truly me was like a job. Yeah. And so right. to me, oh my goodness. Uh, it was, we it was did, like punching a clock. We did and so the house I music. Do that. House music was a little bit better, but that rap and that R and B rap thing, oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> like, it was it was it tough. Is painful yeah, to listen tough. to. That's the tough. one stuff you won't find anywhere. We have not uploaded uh, that anywhere. Is the house stuff out there? I actually I I went through a, a house, house out there. Okay. You I can, went through a house music phase too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, me personally in liking it, I never, I never performed it, but there was a period where I was into house music, but really what it was is those were the clubs that I could get into while I was underage. Um, right. <laughs> and see, we didn't like it because to even promote the record, uh, we would have to come home from work, take a nap, mm. get up, get redressed. Yeah. And then go out and talk, and, and we're not we're wallflowers, so we're not the type of people to go up and talk to anybody. Yeah. So that well, again doesn't bode well. And and most, I mean, you guys actually play music, you play instruments. So what was it like actually doing more of a digital based or, or more of a program based sort of music? Like, were you doing house music differently? I'm I'm curious how you were actually performing it. Oh yeah, I mean, we were doing electronic. And, and, and interesting enough, we um. Because Detroit is kind of like the home of techno. Yeah. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. I, you know, Kevin Saunderson, Derek May, yep. uh, Juan, Juan Atkins, those guys are like the Belleville Three, and and so and that's right here in the Detroit area. And actually, it was um, Kevin Saunderson's studio that mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time down there hmm. and talking to those guys. So I know like Underground Resistance, a uh, guy by the name of um, Mad Mike, Mike Banks, he's actually an awesome, you know, multi instrumentalist. And so, like, we had actually pulled them in to do a remix for us. And, like, when he came down to the studio, he, you know, looked at my guitars and stuff. He said, you need to sell all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of it. Right. But the thing that was eye-opening for me in that whole thing was, um, A, it, you know, it, it taught me how groove-based that music was. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I really started to learn a little bit more about playing, playing keyboards and getting better at that. Hmm. And then number two, it taught me to respect the equipment that I had. Mm -hmm. Because those guys taught me that the equipment that that Tascam TSR-8 was enough to make a record on. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that you had more than enough equipment to make a record yeah. and yeah. to sell that record. Yes. You know, and, and that you can go and get it mastered yeah. right here in Detroit. Yeah. And then you can sell this thing all around the world. And I think that helped you us know? because we were from Detroit. So when we called up the distributor, they right. took it. Right. Yeah. yeah. They were like, oh, you're right. You yeah. know? Our, it, Detroit named just, it helped yeah. us sell yeah. whatever we had to, you know, sell yeah. because, you know, it, everything out of Detroit was just thought to be hot. Yeah. And, you know, and after a while, you know, I started kind of sampling a lot of their records yeah. and, you know, using those sounds. And then we kind of, as usual, our own sound kind of peeked through. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. so, um, and, and doing what we did, we still kind of had our own little 
sound with Plus, it. we, we yeah. wouldn't follow rules like we were supposed to. Because yeah. the records were supposed to be white labels or black label. Yeah. And we put a picture. We had spent all this money to have this photographer take these pictures. Yeah. I was not going to not put that picture on that. <laughs> and so, sure enough, that became like, but at first they were like, no, you can't do that. You can't do that because that's, you know, you're messing it up. Uh, but yeah. after a while, that became the look. You know what I'm saying? That I saw other people doing it. Right. But I'm saying we were not following the rules when we did that. So we couldn't follow the rules right. <laughs> Again. Yes. So whatever. And you and you said that you were learning or you started working more with the programming, the, the things and realizing yeah. what you could do with the music. You you yeah. produce a lot of your own music nowadays, right? You don't necessarily All go into it. the studio. Yeah. All of it. Okay. Yeah. That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Always. It's always been us. Like yeah, that. you know, the other thing about the electronic part that was kind of helpful, especially only having eight tracks, is that to the extent that I can run stuff off tape, because like I would sync things up to my TSR8, you know, real to real. Yeah. Uh, with the Atari. I love and that you're so, using a real to real, by the way. All right. That's awesome. <laughs> so I would, you know, I sync that up. So I'd have my drums running through MIDI. I have like the keys running through MIDI. I could do like sample vocals and run those through MIDI and sync that up with the tape track. Then that way I was able to get additional tracks without mm -hmm. actually having to physically drop them to tape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, you know, once that came on, so then we got the DAT machine after yeah. that. I mean, mm -hmm. that was yet another like, wow, you know, now we can make these really good sounding masters. Yeah. You know, um, so I, again, it was sort of like, it, it was it was a good marriage to me between what was kind of like the analog old way of doing stuff along with the digital way of doing stuff. Yeah. So I, you know, early on, it kind of just prepped me up for that. So that by the time we got to, you know, using, I think I used to use Cakewalk for, uh, I think it was Cakewalk what, what, for the, for the, for the, um, the PC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was using that. And so once I was able to get audio in there, it was just a, a, a easy transition. I love how everybody it. started yeah. out using Cakewalk if they were around during the time that it was out. Like yeah. I tried using yeah. it. I had the hardest time wrapping my head around Cakewalk when I first started <laughs> using it. It was so like I gave up on it for a very long time. Um, <laughs> actually, interesting story about DAT. I remember making the transition to DAT tape. We ended up there was a studio here in town that recorded to DAT tape. And I remember thinking like, oh, it's digital and it's so clean and CDs had just come out and that's how they, they didn't just come out, but that's, that's right. how, you know, they're digital. So it makes it better. Uh, a couple of years ago, we found the old DAT tape out at our studio or an old DAT recorder that we had out at our studio. And we're like, oh, we hooked it up to the board and put it in and everything was going to their own track into the DAT tape when we recorded. And it's like, oh, this will be fun. It'll be a neat little experiment. We listened back it was kind of creepy. It was so pristine and perfect. It was like, there was no life to it. It took like all the, li like yeah. we did a live, it was a live recording of the band. We're listening back and it's like, yeah. it's, oh, it's so God. perfectly recorded. It like, it, it was eerie. It was, we're oh, listening yeah. to it like going, that doesn't sound at all like what we just recorded. Oh. It was, I never realized how much it was like, people used to say that and I'd be like, you're crazy. Digital's fine. It's, there's no difference right. at all. But I don't understand how, I mean, I, rec I clearly record on a laptop or, uh, you know, using software now. It wasn't the same effect. I've done that before and you right. can get the mics. But on DAT, it was just really weird. The way that it translated it onto the tape like, like, did cool. something weird. It's almost like it cleaned it up or right. rounded like the it, edges it or something. Anything. That's kind of like the iPhone camera. It adds like kind of a, its own filter. Yeah. So I think kind of the way they do, they do it kind of the wizard to kind of make it where well, it sounds better. I used to find that with, um, and I know exactly what you're talking about, it because at, at one time, like, you know, when we just used to drop to like a, a, a an analog two track, mm. that it would, something would happen to that mix between, you know, what you were hearing and once it hit that two track tape, yeah. that seemed like it glued everything together, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 you know, in a certain way. And that didn't happen with that. No. And it was like, you had to kind of change the way you mixed when you were mixing down at that so that kind of what you heard in the studio was more or less what you were going to hear on the DAT. Yeah. But you didn't get that treat that you got like when you would mix down to a two track and what you heard back from the two track was like it was just warm and it just had something else to it. You know, I, I can't I can't describe it. It was yeah. it was it was really like I, I don't know, mix just came together 
in a way that just didn't happen with that. I mean, that gave you exactly what you heard, mm -hmm. but I think that was the thing is yeah. getting as used to hearing exactly what you, yeah. heard, what like, you heard. Kind of like that 4K video. Yeah, it, you know. <laughs> See all the wrinkles. <laughs> right. Right. Seriously. Yeah, it, it just it, it just didn't it didn't add anything. I you know, so I understand like, you know, when people go through like those old analog machines to try to capture some of that analog warmth yeah. mm -hmm. that you get, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I and that's something that I, I think I miss a little bit more um, now that I don't have it. But, you know, at first you were always just trying to get to better, better and better, better yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and, and that was the whole thing about digital. Digital was going to make everything pristine, you know, because I, I remember when I heard uh, Bruce Springsteen's Tunnel of Love. Oh, record. yeah. All right. And it was so huge. Yeah. I was like, my goodness, how did <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, the first time I actually heard it was on a mono because I had a, I had a, a, a Chevrolet Chevette. Yeah. Okay. And it, and it had an AM radio in it, and I heard it a mono AM radio, yeah. and it still sounded huge. Yeah. That that record was it phenomenal. Still, it holds up today. To the, yeah. Today, yeah. that record yeah. is unbelievable. You know, and yeah. I and I don't know if it was digital, but I'd heard that it was a digital type thing, and I right. think for me. That was just always kind of like you know, that was the holy was like grail, the you know, the kind of man. If I could just get to, to that, that, right. that you know, tunnel of love sound, uh, that right. was like God. Oh my goodness! But then, of course, that was also done in a studio, not at home. So, although yeah, I mean, I, people I, have I, achieved good sounds at home. I mean, th I, there right. are things that are. I mean, there are even Grammy winners who have recorded their albums at home. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. And along with this. Oh, watch this transition. Along with this DIY attitude, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, you you went one further and not only started doing the stuff, uh, saying we're just going to do it this way. We're going to try these things. You created a website that isn't just about your band. It's also about what you do and offering advice to others. Like, when did you start actually using the blog? side of be of what you had for your band like when did you start putting out information recording videos and sharing what you're doing as far as trying to achieve uh success musically when did you start doing that i think that was four years ago four years um, ago yeah, yeah um my mom passed suddenly and i started realizing that she had dreams in her heart mm -hmm. that never you know came to fruition and that's when i started saying what can we do Mm -hmm. You know, we've got all this material. We had 30 years worth of material that nobody's ever heard. Right. So, you know, and then way back when we used to do the poetry zine, we used to do the right. paper poetry zine. What's that? And, you know, for about years, a DIY, um, uh, sorry, uh, Depressed International. So it was uh, Depressed International. It was a zine and it was like really anonymous. You know, I never showed my face and it was, I only did a few copies and I would, you know, email, I mean, I would um, snail mail them out. You know, so it was huh. just a few. And we started building a community around that. Record companies were sending me T-shirts and things to yeah. review. And it's like, what? And they were making it seem like, you know, we were somebody. And I'm like, all it is is some paper. Right. You know, but it was poet, poets would send their stuff. And, you know, and we then. We did record reviews. We did record reviews. Right. right. So yeah. it was, yeah, a little bit of everything. But it was right. building community. Right. We got tickets to shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got tickets to shows. Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. So that's when I started seeing that maybe there's a way, even as antisocial as we are, we like art and we like to, you know, consume art and then tell other people how we feel about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, there's got to be some kind of way that we can, with the technology that's out now, that we could do all of this. Yeah, and I think we started thinking about things a little bit more holistically. So meaning that it wasn't just about the music, it was, I think, more or less about a whole artistic lifestyle. And yeah. so I think once um, once you start thinking about the personal computer Mm -hmm. And you know the, the 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 you know having the internet and things like that, and, and you have this gateway to express yourself in so many different ways that I, I think you know people like you know us like you, you know we're not unique. There's tons of people who are like that who mm -hmm. have all these different facets to what they do and who they are, mm -hmm. and we just started thinking about it like we can't be alone right. and just in the universe that, that so, people just don't yeah. think myopically yeah. just about music. There are other aspects to this, and there are other people who are doing the same things that we're doing 
So and we might maybe as well we just can, kind of share it. I was about to say, share the things that we've learned along the way and then learn some things. I learned Probably a lot. Not, right. Yeah. Right. I learned, like, you were, you used, what, a headliner or something? I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> so just, just some of the things that we could actually share together that we don't need, you know, Big Brother above us. We just need to join forces. Right. Mm-hmm. Or figure out how we can work together. So. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think, too, it's like, and you know, I know for me, it's, it's sort of like you realize that, at a certain point in time, you kind of age out of, the I guess, the business. regular music yeah. business, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, just because you are past a certain age doesn't mean that artistically you have lost your voice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we recognize that people of all ages still have a musical voice, still yeah. have something musically relevant to say, yeah. have something artistically relevant to say. Yeah. And so, you know, again, just because it might not be an audience of, you know, two, three billion or whatever else that you have out there, yeah. um, you know, doesn't mean that there isn't an audience for what you do. Yeah. You know, so that, that was the other part of it. Yeah. Too, yeah. You know? I love the fact too, that you were trying to get into the music industry, but at the same time you were releasing this thing that was just for you. And then the music industry was going, Hey, can we have you review something? I, I love that dynamic that like, oh, no. yeah. it's, that's, that's interesting. Why, why did you start the, the poetry zine? I'm curious. Because, I'm, yeah, I kept getting rejected. I kept sending out my poem <laughs> and I kept getting rejected. And I'm like, you know, cause then I started thinking, well, maybe I don't like poetry. And I started realizing I write poetry. Uh-huh. And so I started looking for other poets similarly situated. Mm-hmm. And I call it hand grenade poetry. Well, that's what one of my professors called it. The stuff that really kind of gets you, you know, it's kind of uh-huh. the, the, the punk rock of poetry. <laughs> The, you know, the Bukowski. And, so, I mean, but there yeah. are people, you know, all around the world who are doing it mm-hmm. and who have no platform. Yeah. And so then after a while, it was us all together. You know, it's just that I was the one, you know, doing the zine. But, yeah, we were all doing our stuff together. And then, of course, uh, I had uh, my first child, and then that kind of changed everything. Yeah. But, yeah, I just stopped doing it. But, yeah, that, that, that same ethos is what we were thinking when we got together. We said, we should be able to do this. You don't sell music just because of the music. You sell music because people like you. Mm-hmm. Right. And so there's got to be a way. What we start saying is we're real good at this at work, yeah. you know, making friends with people. And we're real good at making content. So yeah. how come we can't do all of this stuff together? Yeah. And mm-hmm. try to draw people to the music. We're really trying to, to sell music. Uh, yeah. There it is. And, and, okay, and we are. But I think it's, it's, it's that aspect, too. But it's also, you know, I'm also a fan of music. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I, I also enjoy music. So, yeah. Um, it, it's it's more than just being in a situation where, you know, I, I like to sell what I do, but at the same token, I like talking about music yeah. because I just enjoy music. <laughs> I'm a fan of, you know, artists that are out there too. I hear songs that are out there on the radio that I love too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's also having a forum and a, and a you know, a, a an opportunity to talk about that. And I'm a gearhead too. Mm-hmm. You know, I salivate over new gear when it comes out too. Whether or not I need it is, you know, who knows about need? It's right. about, hey, this is something I want. You know, and that's usually how it works with gear, you know? Yeah. And my argument too is always like, I, when I put the stuff out there, I mean, I'm going to make it anyway. Even if I wasn't putting it out there, I'm still doing it. So it seems so silly, much like you saying, like, yeah. you know, you had 30 years of music. It's like, yeah. well, why is this just sitting here? You, know, you right. can put it out. And um, the gear thing, that's really funny because all the other guys in my band, are to- they'll sit around and talk about gear. For me, I don't know what it is. I mean, I like gear. And when I use it and it's good, I go, that's really good. But they study it so much. It's like listening to people talk about football. I'm like, I don't know these I- numbers and names oh, that you're saying. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. So it's like, I know what the gear is, but when they get really into it, they'll start saying these specifics and they're like, oh, and it has this thing that does the thing with this number thing. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. I'm like, I know I like to use the Shure 58 for a microphone. (laughs) You know, I don't know. Um, My my keyboard plays notes. Well, that's what we were talking about, too, is that half the time we don't know how to really use the, I guess, get the most out of it. Right. Yeah, because we're always. not that, we're not those type people. We're yeah. people that plug it up, turn it on, let's see. Yeah. Let's, you know, let's you see. figure it out as you go along. That's the thing. You you go yeah. like, I didn't know it could do that. That's going to save me tons of time. Like, it, it, it's right. the getting used to the environment or to the equipment that's really it. Like, I'm using software, uh, recording software that I'm still learning things about it to this day. And we've yeah. made two albums on it so far. You know, it's right. like I'm 
still learning about it, but you right. can still yeah. use it as, you know, it's, yeah. you don't have to wait. And that's the thing about putting stuff out there and just like sharing, like, here's what happened when we did it, which is what you guys have doing. And when did you start uh, making videos? You, you, which, where you're at right now, when we first signed on, I'm like, I recognize that backdrop. That's where you guys yeah. record your videos. So yeah. you do you do live stream videos kind of talking about things that you're doing or ideas that you have. When did you start doing those and why did you decide to start making these videos? Well, we actually started because we wanted to perform live. But we tried the open mic thing and yeah. that mm -hmm. was a bust. We had to come home, take a nap, get redressed, <laughs> go out in the street, love the equipment through the night. We may be up for, you know, they may call us up, they may not, you know, just right. all of that stuff. We just wanted to be in control of what it, our, our, our art. Mm -hmm. So we started with um, a few live, you know, uh, cover, yeah. cover um, uh, videos. And we put them up there. It's like, okay. So we did that. And then after a while, we were doing the blog. And then from the blog, I'm like, there should be a way. We were talking about sitting on the couch having conversations. Because yeah. we have these conversations all the all time. All the time, right, yeah. And so we were like, oh, there's got to be a way, you know, that we can record this and share this. And then that's, you know me, I can't, I can't just be on the couch and do something. It's got to be, you know, we got, got to have makeup on. We got to get dressed. We got to do things. Right. So, so that's when I started looking into the video. But then I started realizing podcast is nothing but the sound from the video. Oh, yeah. So it's like a no-brainer. You know, people say, oh, should I do podcast? Should I? Well, it's the same thing. You just take mm -hmm. the freaking audio. I mean, the, you know, the audio from it and, and upload it to SoundCloud and you're good. So... Mm -hmm. It just became one of those things. It's not something we necessarily tried to do. It was like it was the natural progression. Yeah. They all kind of work together. Oh, yeah. And then also, of course, we have the equipment, you know, like unboxings and things like that. So when we get a new piece of gear yeah. and we think it might be something somebody wants to, you know, hear about. Right. And it's exciting for us. So let's yeah. unbox it. You know, let's do a video of that. So, That's yeah. exactly it. Yeah. It definitely happens for us with gear because I, it's like for me, I don't like to have too much of it, you know, just simply because. Um, I, I find that I can't use too many pieces at the same time. So usually, mm -hmm. if I get a new piece, I might sell a, a sell an older piece or something like that because I I just don't like to have like tons and tons of gear that I kind of got to work through. To me, it it becomes an impediment to creativity yeah. because I have to try to remember, oh, you know, how do you use this again? What do I need to do? And it's like I, I can't do that. Yeah. I, I have to have it where it's got to be easy to use. Yep. You know, so if I get something new, the old stuff is going out. Yeah, you know, yeah I saw you did a video that you sold a board because you got a different right. one. You you like right. sold one on eBay. Right. All right. Yeah. And it's like, no, I'm, we, I'm got, just, we got a couple more things. Yeah. yeah and I got, I got tons of other stuff down here that I just got to get rid of it because it's like, if, if you know, if I'm not going to use it, I'm not going to just store it up and all. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't do that. I can't have yeah. gear for gear's sake. That that yeah. doesn't work for me. Yeah. Plus, it's, it's not working after a while. Beyond. You know how it is. <laughs> right. yeah. Seriously. You know how electronic stuff is? If you oh, yeah. don't boot it up and use it every now and again, yeah. after a while, you go to boot it and it won't boot. It won't so. Work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I still have a six-track tape recorder that uh, I have in my storage. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Those uh, things are really popular now, man. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Of, yeah, who are like you know, doing videos Looking about four cutting track. something on a four track, yeah. and right. the cassettes, you know, and talk about how great they sound. I'm saying, man, you got to be crazy. Mm -hmm. But they're 20 year old. Right. So, you know? you know? right. Yeah. But, it's retro yeah. now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, have at it. You know, I do not wish to go back to a no. four track cassette. I'm yeah. Sorry. Now, <laughs> Being with this, doing this, this uh, DIY and posting and stuff on top of that, you also do a lot of outreach and you have a group. Now, the thing is, is I've kind this is technically the first time we've met speaking to each other, but uh -huh. we've kind of known each other through uh, my mailing list and your mailing list for like yes. the past couple of years. And yes. you actually reached out to me and said, you're a musician. You should join our Facebook group. And yeah, yeah. and you manage that. Now that's. That's a lot of stuff to manage. And also doing like reaching out to people like you're very active. So uh, oh, I, try. I just think about the fact that that you want to spread joy, I guess, in the same way. I, well, we were doing with the poetry zine is like that's how you find other people and, and, and learn new things. So mm -hmm. by us all being together and there's something about music people. I've been talking about that a long time. Bloggers do that. Yeah. Whereas music and musicians, we don't. And yeah. I don't like that. I guess that's the thing. That's a good point. I don't like bloggers do that. Bloggers say, 
you know, hey, let's get a group. Let's share each other's posts. Let's, you know, follow each other on Pinterest. Uh, musicians, we all have, you know, outlet, you know, things that are out, and we're not sharing. We don't have a common playlist. We don't. So, I mean, I actually, we actually have two groups. We have the Funky Happy People, which is sharing just music, you know, like mm -hmm. Gladys Knight and Pips, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever music videos or music, you know, people from yesteryear or new stuff or whatever, because we like music. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we have the DIY Rockstar, which is people trying to make music or making content. It's kind of right. broader, but yeah. 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 And I don't know why we don't do that more often. So it's really just introducing yourself to, you know, new kid in class. Hey, welcome. Come on in. Right. You know, I think summer what? happens with that is that I think the music industry sometimes gets people thinking that there are a limited amount of spots right. for mm -hmm. people to be successful. So they start feeling like we're all competing maybe for the same spot. So seeming like, you know, hey, there's only so many of us that could, you know, make get it to make it into that one spot. And so um, a lot of times I think it makes people a little bit more protective of, hey, I, you know, I got to hold on to what I can do, right. information. So like, that, if you it's know, a country music right. spot, I'm not, if there's something that, that I'm, especially if it's something we're not going to use anyway, right. to me, it's better to share it with the group. Right. You know, or even if it is something, hey, I'm, we're going to this, you know, we're going to, you know, log right. on for this. Yeah. Hey, maybe this is something you're interested in. Or, right. You know, I don't know. Just but, seems uh, simple. But the DIY thing is more about finding your own tribe. Yeah. You know, that, mm -hmm. that yeah. there's a spot for everybody. Yeah. You know, and so I, I think that, and that to me is a different, it, it's a paradigm shift for some people yeah. that are involved in music to, to think about it that way that, hey, no, there's a spot for everybody. You know, usually people who are a fan of music listen to more than just one, one artist. Right. You know, Even they if they love artists, one right. artist, they're not just only going right. to listen to that yeah, artist. If you're, right. hip -hop, if you're a person who's into hip hop, you're not just listening to one hip hop artist. Yeah. You're listening to tons of them. Yeah. So, I mean, but it's, it's kind of, you know, you know, changing that mindset, just that and whole that's paradigm, even you know, amongst so. our friends. It's like we realize that even our friends who make music, they're not in any most of our groups or you know what I'm saying? They're just not because we've all been raised that same way. There's one person, there's one job and we're all going for the same job. Like, really? We don't even write the same type of song. Right. So <laughs> I don't you know, whatever, you right. know, but but there are seven billion people on the planet. Somebody is going to join. And so that's that's the way I look that's at exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 How how difficult is it to manage a group? I've never managed one before. I'm always curious as to how big of an undertaking that is. Well, right now it's not because it's probably not as active as it should be. I try to log on every day mm -hmm. um, and at least look at people's and go to their, you know, if they have a YouTube video or whatever. Um, but trying to get people to post is the thing. Yeah, a lot of people are it is. Things, but I mean, I'm guilty of it, too. I'm in your group and I haven't posted anything in a really long time. <laughs> I know. I've shared, but you know, that's my way of doing it too. Kind of the branch across the aisle, like don't feel, cause I know a lot of groups, you know, we post out there and they'll slap us down. Oh, this is denied because it's mm -hmm. not about guitars. Or, you know, again, yeah. that's keeping it too small. To me, it's about content creation. So if you, at first I had it open for authors and, you know, if you make paintings, if you, but whatever your content is, you're still a DIY rock star. You're still trying to build a creative oh, empire. Yeah on your own and to me this is a way of us doing it together if i'm making t-shirts you may be a visual artist but if i share information about getting t-shirts made that might be helpful to you yeah, yeah. so but, to me it doesn't make any sense not to share i don't know right. yeah yeah the 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 same thing applies to anybody that creates something like it, whether i talk to a writer or that's why i'm always curious like when i do have people on this show like say they're uh, I like say an author or say uh, somebody who's a sculptor and maybe people listening are like, Oh, well I'm more interested in illustration. So I'm not going to listen to that one. But the thing is, is the struggles and the things that they try to accomplish are still the same background. You're still trying yeah. to put the same yeah. things out there and you never know what kind of idea I've, I've learned many different ideas from talking to people of different backgrounds uh, in creativity and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And yeah. The, it's all, and it's all coming from a different standpoint going, Oh, over here, we do this in this field. Right. And, yeah. and it's like, Oh, I never thought of that. Yeah. You right. can do that. You know? And, right. and you all of a sudden the things start moving and like you get unblocked and there's like a new opening that shows 
Yeah. Oh yeah, you can try this thing and it could apply to this other thing that I'm doing. I love yeah. that I can't think of a specific example off the top of my head and I keep saying the thing with the thing. I wish no, I could actually make a real example. Right. <laughs> that knowledge transfers over. So yeah. Yeah. It's, if, if you're a creator, you like you say, you're going to have similar struggles. Why not share what you know? Mm-hmm. And all we're doing is sharing our journey. I, if When we first started, I think I was more of the, you know, this is the right way to do it. And I'm like, you know what? Nobody knows the right way. Not no. even the experts. Not even if you go to college and you get a degree in it, you still don't know the right way. No. Otherwise, major labels would have hits all the time. Right. So yes. obviously the experts don't know anything anyway. Right. Yeah. So it's about your journey. What are you doing to advance whatever it is that you're trying to do? So, yeah. That's so why yeah. whenever I am talking about things that I've tried and have worked for me or even just here's how I do it. I never say this is how you should do it or right. do right, things yeah. this yeah. way. I, I never say that because – I don't know anything. I don't know what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah, I'm just trying some stuff. And again, right. there could be another way that I've never even heard of. That's actually the better way to do it. And you know, it's. And then everybody's journey is going to be different anyway. So. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and, yeah, I think about that when we did like our first record, our first house music record that we did. And you know, it's kind of like the house experts that heard it was kind of like, Oh no, this is not, it's not going to be really good. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. And it just, just People around us who yes. heard it, you know. Because we had Underground yeah. Resistance do a remix. Yeah. And right. so they kind of. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about like Red Hot. Oh, Red Hot. Yeah, okay. so, so right, like with Red right. Hot, you know, <laughs> and they were saying that. And then it was like we sent it out to a distributor in New York. Mm-hmm. And so we were fully expecting to get all those records back. Yes. You mm-hmm. know, because they were like, oh, this is going to be a flop. But then, you know, um, there was one guy one there guy. Mm-hmm. that fell in love with it. Hmm. And he, he was like, yeah, he sold all those mm-hmm. records, you know. And so I, that was the only record that we ever did that we got absolutely no returns on. Right. Wow. You know, and that was the one that was supposed to be like, you don't know what you're doing. You know, and, and, with and, the picture on the cover. Yeah, like, just you know, all, all kinds that. of things. You know, it just wasn't quite a house record. I don't know what the hell type of record it was. But, I guess it kind of had a little bit of hip hop. It had a little hip hop because it had a little bit of New Jack swing to it. It mm-hmm. just, it, yeah. it just was all over the place. Yeah. And you know, this guy connected with it, and you know, because he connected with it, you know, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, you know, I had lost all belief in the record. You know, yeah. a lot of time. Well, by the time he had fallen in love with it, I'd already said, "Oh my goodness, crap! This is horrible." Oh. You know, and he fell in love with it and he sold it. So, you know, that's just back to that point that there's never really that right way to do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you just never know when the stars might align in the universe. But you have to try. I guess the only thing you you can't control... And that's that's kind of my daily thing. Yeah. The only thing I can control is what I'm doing. You got to at mm-hmm. least try. You got to yeah. at least you got to put it out there. Yeah. You yeah. have to yeah. you have to get it out there so that people can And you have to you enjoy know, it. Right. So if you're enjoying it like with the the Gab and Jam, I don't know. I I thought now, maybe That's the one thing I I disagree with you on. I don't think you necessarily have to enjoy it. You just you have to get it <laughs> out. Like I said, I, 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 I No, I'm it. just saying that I came okay. to a point with Red Eye. I don't believe it anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was trying to distance myself away from that. I get record, what you're saying. You know, but it's, saying it's like that. No, it's like the playing it cool to uh, meet the uh, meet the boy or the girl. You're like, you got it. Eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but for me to continue doing it, I guess, right. like you said, to, to be able to juggle so much, I ask myself sometimes, like, is this worth it? And I have to say, as long as I'm doing the things I want to do. Right. Now, if I'm doing something, I feel like people are telling me you should do this. That's when it becomes a problem. Right. And so that's I have to constantly ask, am I in, am I doing the things that yeah, I, I want that. to do? Yeah. 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 Right. So I was that, just saying that in order to get, get it out, to get it yeah. out there. But then, because you got to be proud of it. If yeah. you're not proud of it, then that means you won't promote it more. I guess that. Yeah, and, and and again, yeah. I still say even if you won't promote it more, you got to put it out. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, know, because sometimes true. you never know who's going to run across it. Like we had a, mm-hmm. uh, we had a record we did because we have another student in by the name of Tony Webb. I I do these songs that are that <laughs> another usually kind of like. Right? Uh, uh, bass only. Yes, so Tony right. Webb is all bass. Yeah, and right. and I, I think for one one of the songs that we had, somebody had done a video yes, for it. Yes, they did. You oh, know, yeah. and they put it up on YouTube, and I just happened to do a search for Tony Webb out there, and I found the video, and I was like, you know, we didn't do it. They were so inspired and right. enjoyed yep. the song. They made their they own video. They did their own video. Yeah. So, I, so, again, it's one of those type of things that, it's it's always great if you believe in what you do and all the rest of that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, 
the first thing you got to do is be willing to put it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so yeah. whether you believe in it, whatever else, you got to be able yeah. to put it out. Because, again, if you don't show up to work, you won't be there for the opportunity. Yeah, that's true. You know, now you might yeah. be sick as a dog when you show up to work. I have a way that you might show up there. I don't know. Right. But no, who knows what type of opportunity that might, you know, present itself yeah. just because you're in the room. Yeah. So and that, that's why you have to well, and you finding that like, it, and I've referred to those as vanity searches, which is just a funny thing yeah. to call it. But those are very handy, especially yeah. if you make something visual or uh, like that lends itself to video or musically. I do them on YouTube all the time, and I'm amazed yeah. at the stuff I see that like our our stuff is being used in the background of. I found t right. I have a whole playlist of videos of things where like. I didn't ask these people to do that. They create right. like people did animated videos or they used it in the background, like with something else right. they're doing. I'm like, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, and I've, I know. I've got a whole playlist of those things. Right. Love yeah. It. Yeah. That's awesome. That, that is awesome. Well, now you give me an idea. Exactly. Anytime that kind of stuff happens, yeah. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, but you got to put it out there yes. yeah. in order for yeah. those things to happen, yeah. you know, to, yeah. to be available for those opportunities. Yeah. Your stuff has to be out there. Yeah. Whatever you know, happened so to I, the, I, whatever happened to the super fan that, uh, that sold out of all that record. What happened to that person? I, I, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, up until recently, we weren't again into marketing. We weren't really into, mm. to I guess, networking and to continuing again. Yeah. I'm guilty of the same thing. Whereas now we're more, we understand that there is a, for people like us, there is a way to do it. Yeah. So like you talk about uh, managing the groups. I get up in the morning. I'm on the treadmill anyway. 45 mm -hmm. of my minutes go into, let's see what's going on with the group. Maybe once a week I drop something to say, hey, how's it going? This mm -hmm. is the resource we're using. So I, right now I'm not doing a whole lot. I, I'll maybe drop a link to a couple people who I see performing live online. Like maybe you come over here to the group. You know, other than that, that's kind of, but that's our version of networking that works yeah we don't have to leave the house we don't have to oh, of course you know, we're working on trying to do better at conferences that's going to be our next challenge next year well yeah. we can we started, yeah <laughs> we started the year before last doing a little bit better yeah. but we have some strategies but we're just not the type of people to just walk up to folks and you know grab their hands and like you know we're so and so we're yeah. just not those folks so yeah but you have to just find what works for you for you yeah, yeah. How how much were you were you playing out live before uh, everything shut down in the past year? Not at all, because we figure we can get reach more people Valid. online. Yeah, we got the whole world. I We're don't disagree with you whatsoever. I I totally yeah. agree. I've actually and I've said this a few times. It's it's the one thing that I will spin a positive on is that everybody's always said like, oh, we'd like to get online sooner. We'd like to do some. Everybody had an like it was on the back of their list of things mm -hmm. to do was kind of right. set up live streaming. And now everybody's kind of been forced to do it. And the amazing yeah. stuff that I've seen happen because of it has been really cool. There's a band here in town where the guy was already kind of doing an online presence and was really involved and then he went full in he is doing live streams he's doing cooking shows he's like his wow. his wow. his band is doing all kinds of stuff like he is using the platform i'm actually super jealous of him to tell you wow. the truth but but happy for, jealous in a happy way but he's uh he's doing some stuff and i'm amazed at what he's doing and it's fantastic and he's really taking the opportunity and it's it's really cool and i've seen other people do that doing live streams or even just the yeah. you've been doing the instagram uh you've been playing uh you've been playing songs oh, on instagram yeah, yeah, and yeah. doing doing solo stuff on there and pinterest oh my goodness yeah. we started doing story pins and like I'll upload it, and then two hours later, there are five thousand views of of this of him playing, nice. and I'm like, what? Yeah. You know, and like six people have pinned it. I'm like, what? <laughs> I just uploaded it, you know, thirty minutes ago. So yeah, just trying different stuff. Yeah, exactly. And we're trying to do more TikTok. I keep forgetting about TikTok. Yeah. Because yeah. we actually have like some now followers on TikTok and okay. some plays, and I'm like, I keep forgetting about it though. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. Is it's the and that's the way I've always thought of it too. Like most of the fans that I have are overseas. I've never been overseas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we went to actually meet our fan, our 10 year fan. He was pre-internet. Yeah. Really? We actually saw him when we went to London and yeah. him and his family, yeah. they took us out. But wow. that was like, and he knew all our songs. Like 
Uh, we had our daughter with us, yeah. and there was a song or something that we mentioned, and he was like, "Oh, you mean Zandalese? Whatever, whatever yeah. the song yeah. was." Yeah. And I'm like, "Oh awesome. my goodness, he's ripping the catalog!" Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was awesome. That was surreal because he made yeah. it seem like he was meeting somebody, and I'm like, "We're so excited to meet you." Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, yeah, I mean, he knew us. He knew stuff from like our our tape and CDs. right before wow. the internet. Before the yes, internet. Right. yes. Yeah. So you know, this is like the stuff that we were doing on the. TSR eight hey, real yes. real. So, you know, he knew us from those days. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. But that was exciting. Yeah. Well, and you guys fun. have a new album out right now that actually yes. you have the option to you yeah, you actually have the option to download the whole discography with it, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yep. Um yeah. Bandcamp, yep. Okay. Well, it's not the entire we have twenty five out al this is the twenty fifth album. So we have 25 released albums. That means I'm there's a few total. years in between I'm there that you guys about. were slacking. <laughs> I'm not talking about bourgeoisie paper jam, but you know, we have Jezebel, we have, you know, synthetic living organism, we have Tony Webb, we uh -huh. have projectors. So each like type of music has its own persona. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the, the, I'm saying 25 albums with all the different per personas. Yeah. yeah. So, Nothing wrong yeah, with that at all. A praise and worship album, which kind of never <laughs> took off, but we do have a praise and worship <laughs> album. Okay. So. It, it was yeah. uh yeah because it's it's uh it's our slant on what would well, be praise and worship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if that audience would even identify yeah, with it. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about the new album a little bit. So um this new album is you know usually like with our bourgeoisie paper jam albums we kind of. Oh, go, uh, okay, you got the promo. Yeah. So, uh, and usually what our bourgeoisie paper jam albums, they usually kind of jump all over the place stylistically. In the genre, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, you know, whereas this one, we kind of stay close in the funk vein. Yes. So, so this one, we kind of call like our funk album. Yes. And so it's like, you know, 15 songs mm -hmm. of just straight up funk. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's really the best way to put it, you know. um. You know, and it, it, it kind of, I think it still has a certain amount of diversity to it. Yeah. Uh, even though it does kind of fall in that funk vein. So I think there's a, you know, there's a lot of Prince, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of Rick James, a lot yeah. of uh, Mal Rogers. Yeah. Um, so if you, you know, like them, you probably would, would buy yeah, this yeah, album. Yeah, you yeah. probably would kind of relate to where this, this record's going. So, yeah. so I, you know, it was, I don't know, I, I, I think I was. I think we were just kind of in the mood for something like yeah. that, you know? Um, yeah. And so just finally, we kind of put it together. The weird thing about it is that I think the the songs I thought that would comprise this album actually didn't. Um, so I, 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 so meaning that there were like a bunch of like funky grooves uh, that we had completed yeah. that didn't make you know a higher up higher up deeper end album yeah. that's the album before this yeah that I thought would comprise this record mm -hmm. and so um however as we started working on this record just different stuff started coming up start filling stuff for that and just didn't get around to finishing the other stuff oh, yeah. mm -hmm. so it just you know it you know it kind of turned into a different project than what I thought it would be but still it still stayed that kind of cohesive funky yeah. group. so for bourgeoisie paper jam it's kind of a difference in the fact that i think it's a little bit more cohesive, cohesive yes. stylistically yeah than some of the previous albums i think that usually the albums are cohesively uh, all idealistically. Over the place. Yeah. But, but idealistically it's like you know the same type of theme yes will follow through the yeah, songs even though lyrics, stylistically yeah they will hop all over the place. Yeah. Whereas here, I think thematically, they probably change up a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But stylistically, it stays the same. So, yeah. you know. I, and it's our first attempt to really promote an album. So we're giving this album a year. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this is the first time because you know we weren't into marketing and sales. I wasn't. I just know and and no, trying not, to and trying to introduce uh, I'm myself not to people I was the marketeer and cold so. emails and getting on the phone and all of that. I was not that person. Yeah. But right. I started doing it for work all the time. You know, I'm, I'm you know well liked. You know, in most places and people are like, oh, we just love you. And I'm like, why can't I use that for for what we do? So that's what I'm. Doing. It's hard to do it for your own stuff. Like I could somebody could give me like, hey, promote this thing for me, and I'd be like, I'll do it up and down and get yeah. you have all the stuff that you want. But then yeah. when it's your own stuff, it's like, where do I start? This is, this is weird. How do I sit here and tell people that 
well, the stuff I have I is so great. <laughs> is I yeah. pretend like now it's a product that somebody has given me to promote. And then mm -hmm. I, and that, that's how I've been doing it. Yeah. Where I come up with, okay, what's your, your elevator speech? Is, um, it's crunchy on the bottom, it's sugary sweet on top. You know what I'm saying? Come up with your, <laughs> well, if, if you heard it, yeah. if somebody else had done it, this is what I would say. That would have been my DI review. Right. Yeah. That would have been my, if I was on the, um, doing the, the zine, that would have been my quick take on, on this album. So yeah. I just started using it like that. Like if a client came to me, I am the client. We are the client. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what I would say. So yeah. that's, that's how I've been doing it. Nice. I like it. Yeah. And I, 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 I think for me, it's like I, I've been in artist mode for so long. So usually we might do like two or three albums at the same time. Oh, yeah. We, he, you know? Oh, my. You that, know, you see the song <laughs> yeah. Those are all, some of them are finished songs. Some, some of them are pieces of songs that have been now put together. But there's always a, a lineup of, mm -hmm. of, of songs. So. Right. And, and, and so a lot of times it's hard to. Like once something is done, yeah, to, be to actually about start it. saying, okay, I'm gonna be excited about it, and I'm just gonna start doing this because usually it's like by the time it's done, it's old, right? And so it's like you feel like you know mentally you've moved on, on someplace yeah. else. Oh, you of know? course. And so, uh, so you know, it, it kind of helps for us to have SoundCloud because yeah, we release stuff on SoundCloud too. So like every month we'll do an original song on SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. So if there's an original song that you know we just kind of want to throw up there, you know, I, I'll normally throw up stuff that I'm working on as far as mixes and stuff like that, that I'll just kind of refine. Um, but it gives me that release of putting it out there yeah. without necessarily interfering with what's going on with Sugar Fit, <laughs> you know, because that stuff we don't necessarily promote. Right. You know, yeah. whereas this stuff we actually promote. Uh, we're, we're, and it's are, still we stuff coming out. Like sell it. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's the hardest thing is to, show work that you're in the process of doing it's it, but yeah. at the same time it's brilliant it's like you have the opportunity to show something where people can go oh that's neat it doesn't have to be yeah. finished and show the process along the way it's that's it but it's also again a difficult thing to get in the mindset of it's like i can't show this yet this is horrible or it's right. unfinished <laughs> But, I don't um, think he feels that way. I think his thing is he's ready to move on to the next thing. So he's excited. <laughs> to, to show. I'm the one that's saying, let's not forget about. But then again, that's 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 what I'm going to take on. OK. So, yeah. So it's been that way for me for videos. I need to pick up the pace. I was supposed to do 15 videos. And so far, I've only done what two. So right. I, I got to pick up the pace. Well, so. if I'm not mistaken, you guys did a live stream right before we did this call. If I'm not mistaken, is that is that correct? <laughs> No. Oh, you must. It, it was a live. It wasn't a live stream. It oh, was, you re um, you released it. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Was, I was gonna be like, did you guys seriously record a video and then come do this? But you no. had it scheduled. <laughs> I got you. Okay. That's funny. Um, and then I just have uh, one more question for you. Uh, now you say you're gonna be marketing for the next year. So what kind of uh, aside from that, what kind of plans do you have for this for this upcoming year? Well, it's really, we have a few different uh, lists. I know this Portland radio station has expressed interest. So we're going down radio stations. Oh. We've been um, snail mailing out CDs. Okay. Um, we hit, um, I think, probably about 100 record stores, just sending them the CD. Nice. Yeah. And actually, the last time we did that before this album was out, we actually see some of those up on eBay. So there have been some people <laughs> taking those records. For the last release. So whatever. It's out there. Somebody yeah, is, is exactly is, is spending money trying to promote to sell it. So yeah, good for them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so just trying to get the journalists, you know, and so just constantly, yeah, just every week, constantly, you know, getting the word out, you know, reviews, you know, shows like yours. Yeah. So whether it's peers finishing or, up those videos, it's, yeah, it's all of that yeah. stuff that mm -hmm. you know needs to be done as far as the promotion trail goes. It's so, always new because yeah. if nobody knows about it, it's like the tree falling in the forest. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta let people know. So yeah. until every human, every seven billion people know and all they've right. To said no, then we can right. move on. But other than that, I'm going to keep going. Yeah, and probably towards the end of the year, or maybe going into next year, there might be like a new Tony Webb record. Oh, yeah, we already have a, a probably a full one. Now. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> like a, yeah, a full Tony Webb record that's kind of done already. So that will probably be coming out, you know, because I got a couple of different tracks that we're working on with that. But yeah. we're try trying to get more collaborators even on that. Yeah. So, um, so cool. you know, we're, we're got a couple of different things yeah. happening in the fire right now. So. Nice. You know, and then looking forward to 2021. And then if people wanted to check this stuff out, where would you like them to go see your things? Bandcamp. So yeah. search Projippy. If you search Projippy, I swear 
Have yeah. you searched for Jippy? Yeah. You search for Jippy, I swear yeah. you're going to run up on us. But for jippy.bandcamp.com. Yeah. Okay. R E J I P P I E. Yep. Dot bandcamp.com. And yeah. you, you'll get at least a few of the different personas, but definitely yeah. Sugar Fit. Sugar yeah. Fit. Oops. And yeah. if you want to see all the other content that we have, like on um, YouTube, again, just go for Jippy. Yes. That's P R E J I P P I E. Just put that in the search bar on YouTube yes. and you'll see all of our stuff. Nice. So. It's like it's like sparkle vomiting. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I usually say unicorn farts, but sparkle vomit oh, yeah, is yeah, even yeah. better. Oh. I like that. <laughs> I think I'm going to steal that one. Uh, yeah, go right ahead. I like that one. All right. Well, I'm really glad that I got the chance to meet both of you today. Well, we're yeah, glad we enjoyed, to meet you. We enjoyed talking to you. Enjoyed meeting you.